is the entrance to Portland House, where the visitors will come when we are fully open, which is quite soon, very soon, March 1st, in fact. Um, the principle, the unique thing about Portland is its age. Um, it's the most, it's, it's the house in England that's been inhabited the longest. It was, it was consecrated in 937, which is a very long time ago, and it's been continuously occupied since then. These pictures uh, are some of the, th these pictures will be seen by all the members of the public who come. Uh, these lower ones are all 18th century portraits, members of the family. Uh, the lady in the middle, uh, married into the family when she was very young and brought a huge fortune with her. This is the lobby of the house. Uh, it's filled with portraits of members of my family. Of interest, I suppose, is the wallpaper. Uh, it's the colour green is used. Uh, they used arsenic to turn it green. So be careful when you come here. This is the principal room of the house. It's, it's called the morning room. Uh, it's, the only, it's on the south side of the house. So the sun shines in, as you can see. Uh, again, the pictures are mostly to do with my family. The fabric on the wall is mid-19th century crimson damask. Uh, big picture over the fireplaces by Van Dyke. Uh, and uh, it's where my family live. We live here, this is our front room, as it were. This is the model of the maze that I have constructed in the garden. Uh, from this scale model. Uh, it has a bewildering number of combinations and uh, I hope that people will come and find it in the garden and uh, try and get lost. Um, I have a motto, a little motto that goes with it. It says, enter those who wish, leave those who can. So here we are in the saloon um, looking down the length of the house to the drawing room. These two rooms were originally the refectory when Portellet was a monastery. Um, today this saloon is um, used at tea time sometimes. We, we um, sit in here and in the spring we sit in here and look at the lambs. The saloon is dominated by portraits by Sir Joshua Reynolds. Um, there's some very early works of his here of great national and international art historic interest. Um, they're all family portraits. Um, he was a friend of the first Lord Elliot, Edward Elliot, and in fact, Edward Elliot was one of his pallbearers at his um, state burial in St Paul's Cathedral. Um, this is a classic English room, the saloon. There's everything about it is English. The carpets are Axminster. The writing desk is a Carlton House writing desk, which is a very traditional English piece of furniture. The vase is above the bookcase, uh, Wedgwood, very early ebony Wedgwood, um, which is extremely rare and interesting to people who are interested in Wedgwood. Really, the, the best thing about this room is the view from the windows, which is the most perfect English view of um, Port Elliot Park, which was landscaped by Repton, Sir Humphrey Repton, in um, the 1790s. And it never fails to enchant you when you're sitting in here. Every time you look up, the view is slightly different and it's just beautiful. This early 19th century French crystal chandelier hangs in the round room at Port Elliot. This is considered to be one of Sir John Soane's great masterpieces. He designed this room over the original monastic dormitories and it's some 13 metres in diameter and 5.5 metres high with a imperceptibly domed ceiling. Um, it's an absolutely glorious room and in the 1970s my husband decided it should be decorated. It had been used for most of the 20th century as a junk room, unbelievably. But the only way he felt he could really decorate it was by commissioning an artist to paint it and he stumbled across the Plymouth artist Robert Lenkovitz and um, entreated him to come and see the Ram Room and they then began a 30-year collaboration. And this piece of uh, art by Robert, the mural here in the Ram Room, is considered his great masterpiece too and it really is. It's an extraordinary, extraordinary piece of work. Um, the mural depicts the condition of man where on one half of the wall um, he presented loneliness, unrequited love, corruption, insanity, death, whilst on the other side of the wall of the room, 
There's harmony, proportion, love, friendship, hope, passion, truth, and beauty. Um, it's a conundrum, this mural, and one that only really Robert could explain, and sadly he, he's no longer alive, but it always haunts you when you're in here, and it's the most magnificent thing. Also in this room, there's a carpet, which is um, rose madder colored, and it's by Orbison. It was originally housed in a Russian palace, and then sold by the revolutionaries in the 1920s, and then it was in the Brighton Pavilion for many years, until my husband bought it when he redecorated the ram in the 80s and it fits absolutely perfectly. The fireplace is finely carved pine wood. Um, it was originally found in a cottage on the estate, the shepherd's cottage, an ornate little cottage. And on its top of the mantelpiece are some log books, as they're called. They were carved by my husband's friend, Hethcote Williams, the writer who lived at Port Elliot, he came to stay for a weekend in the 80s and ended up living here for 10 years. And these books have, were shaped out of logs from the log basket and are now known as the log books, which is quite a bad pun.